Good morning, everybody. It's Charlie Craven, and today I'm going to tie for you an old fly of mine. Uh, this one is called a Go to Hell variant, and this fly is a variation on, um, or a combination, I guess I should say, of a Royal Wolf, a, a Humpy, um, an HL variant, and sort of came about from, uh, um, you know, fishing a Royal Wolf and, a, and an HL variant, how easy they are to see. Um, but having a, a big bushy fly that uh, was easy to see that you could sort of tie in a few different colors. Um, you know, lime humpy is one of my favorites. Um, so um, this white wing and white tail of the of the H and L variant uh, combined with that uh, sort of made a great attractor fly. And uh, this is still a good fly. Uncle used to carry this fly. They don't do it anymore. Um, it sort of came and went, but. Um, sort of makes me sad and definitely makes my son Char sad uh, because he really likes this fly, but I'll tie some for him. He'll, he'll be okay. Don't you worry about him. Um, so at any rate, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, this is a size 14 100 SP, uh, and I'm going to start with some 14 out white Vivas. And I'm going to start this thread just up here behind the eye. And I want to wrap back to about midpoint on the hook and then come forward again to about 75. So, um, you know, split that, split that difference. Um, I was just tying a bigger fly. I need to tighten my vise down a little bit. There we go. So I want to tie these wings in at about 75. Um, so what I want to do here is I want to use some calf body. Um, and this is, you can't see that where I get that right up close. This is calf body from Stephen Hankins at Magpie Materials. Um, this is some really nice straight calf body hair. Um, so I'm going to take a clump of this and I like a fairly heavy wing on this fly. Um, so I'm going to cut a pretty nice even clump and I'll hold this up here where you can see it. What you want to do with calf is you want to pull all this short stuff out and you feel like you're wasting a lot. Um, this fine stuff you can actually stack for a smaller fly. It actually will work just great for smaller flies. Uh, but in the case of this bigger fly, I want to get rid of that. I want to just leave myself the longest stuff. <laughs> And then if I've got anything extra long, I want to pull that out also. Um, one of the keys to cleaning any kind of hair is to hold it as close to the tips as you can so you're not holding on to the short stuff that you're trying to get rid of. Um, and it's not just the shorter hairs, but you can see those hairs are finer than the main clump, so they don't stack at the same rate. Um, and honestly, you just got to kind of keep working on it until you get all that fine stuff out. And you'll always have some left. So I'm going to take this and put it in my, my medium hair stacker. And I'm going to give it a few wraps. Now, because this stuff is, um, it has got a little wave to it. Even straight calf body is going to have a little wave to it. That's the whole idea. Um, because it's got a little wave to it, you want to pound it a little bit until it gets nice and square. Whoa, get back in there. Nice and square in your stacker. Boy, that was close. Nice and square in your stacker, like so. So I'm going to take that out of there. And if I've got anything extra long sticking out, I'll pull it out of the way. Um, so I've got a fairly heavy bunch. I'd like I say, I'd like this to be a heavy wing. And I'm going to measure this a shank length long. And then I'm going to tie it in here at that 75% point. And you can see when I bind this down, it does not flare. So I'm going to make a band of thread that travels backwards. Then I'll bump the thread forward a little bit. And then I'm going to lift these butt ends up and come in with my scissors from the back and cut at an angle. And what that'll give me is a tapered base. Um, I'm going to unwind those two turns and now I can continue back over those. And you can see how that builds a nice even taper into that tie-off. Um, I'm going to leave the wings sit, sitting forward here for right now because we're going to come back to the bend and we'll do our tag and tail next. So I'm going to come back to the bend and at this point I'm going to take a piece of medium-sized Mirage tinsel and I'm going to use this for the tag. So what I like to do here is I like to tie this in um, just here at the at the bend of the hook and I'll draw it down to length and catch it with a couple turns. And then I'm going to wrap this tinsel down the bend, just two or three overlapping turns. Pretty short little tag. And then forward over the top of that again. And then I'll tie that off with a couple turns there. Then I can nip that out of there. So just a little hot spot at the bend. Just add a little flash there. So now I'm going to grab that calf body hair again, and I'm going to take about half a, the cl a clump about half the size of what we used for the wings, and I'm going to clean it out, and I'm going to stack it up as well. And 
take it out of my stacker. Get a hold of it here, like so. So I'm going to measure this against the wing. So you can measure it against the wing or against the shank. They should be the same. Um, if you're not confident of one, you can be confident of the other. Um, but I'm going to take this and I'm going to tie this in at the bend right at a shank length long. And I want to keep it right on top of the bend of the hook, like so. So kind of a big bushy tail. Now these butt ends, what I want to do with these is I want to lift these up and come in and cut those at an angle straight across. So the butt ends were at an angle, but the scissors were straight, okay, parallel to the hook. And then as I wrap forward over that, you can see that blends everything together nice and smooth. We've got a nice beveled taper that comes right back into itself. Now I'm going to bring this thread back to the bend. And I like to put just a couple of posting turns, one or two, around the tail. And that'll elevate the tail a bit. So it sets it up off the off the water. <clears throat> and the way this fly will sit on the water is that little tag will hang down below. And one of the cool things about that tag of Mirage Tinsel in general is it'll kind of pick up the colors of whatever's around it. So I'm going to bring my thread forward again. And now we'll go to work on our wings. Um, so what I'll do here is I'm going to close my fingers under the hook and draw that, draw that calf body here back. And I'm going to build a thread dam in front to stand this upright. Now calf is a solid hair so it doesn't compress and it's not easily influenced by the thread. Um, so you've got to make a pretty solid thread dam right up against this front edge. And what I'm doing here is as I come on top, I'm going to make the turn in front of the wings, and on the bottom, I'm going to push it behind. And that's going to push those thread wraps right up against the base of the wing to stand that bunch up, like so. Just like that. Okay. Um, now you can see that's spread out from front to back fa fairly wide. Um, to gather that, I'll grab that wing, and I'm going to take a turn from the front of the wing to the back of the wing, right up against the back of the wing. I'll put another one in there. And that'll sort of regather that. You can see how that just bunched that together. I'll jump the thread back behind the wings again. And now, standard hair wing procedure. We're going to divide this clump of hair in half. Um, and my fingers can do this better than my eyeballs. Um, I can kind of gauge the, the size of each clump with my fingers. And I'm just going to part that hair. I'm going to go back to front four or five turns stacked on top of each other. Then I'll grab my near wing and go front to back four or five turns, stacked. Um, and what you want here is you want those X's <clears throat> to be on top of each other. One wrap stacked right on top of the other. Um, you don't want them side to side. Um, if you get them side to side, it starts to pull the wings forward. And you can see these wings are actually leaning a little bit forward right now. Um, not a big deal. I'm going to show you how to fix that when we post. Um, so now I'm going to take a turn around the hook. And I like to turn the far wing up. And I'll hold on to the near wing, and I'm going to turn my bobbin upside down. I'm going to post up the base of this wing just enough to gather that wing into a nice, neat clump. And then I can come down. I'm going the wrong way now. Under the hook, over the hook, around that wing. You can see how I positioned that wing in place. Now I'm going to do the near wing, and for the near wing, I don't change, I just change hands. Um, so I did those wraps with my thread hand. I'm going to use my, in this case, is my left hand to post this wing. And kind of, you see how I can pull on that thread and position that wing, just using the thread tension. And then I can place those wings right where they need to be. And where I want them um, is uh, 90 degrees to the hook shank and about 45 degrees to each other. If I turn this toward you, you can see what we've got there. All right, then I'm going to come in and just whip finish my white thread. Now the reason I use white thread there is I don't want the thread to show um, on the post on either the tail or the wing. I, let, I want them to blend in. Um, and I'm going to come in with, in this case I'm going to tie a, a lime colored one, so I'm going to use um, some bright green Beavis 14 knot. Um, originally I used Danville 70 denier, but the, the uh, supply of that is sketchy these days. Um, so I'm going to use this 14 knot Beavis, which is a great color as well. Um, and this will lay nice and flat. So I'm going to start this at about the 60% on the hook, 60 point on the hook. Clip off my tag end, and I'm going to build my abdomen with this. So I'm just going to cover that white thread to start. And I want to come right back to the base of the tail. 
and I'm just going to make a nice smooth even thread body. Work back and forth a couple times. I like a little bit of a taper to it. About, yeah, about like so. And then as I go to finish the last layer, we're a little hot here on the camera. I'm gonna tone this down just a bit. That might be a little better. For the last layer, I wanna unwind the thread so that it lays flat so I get a really smooth final cover over the top of this. Now, one thing that I didn't get to do back in the day, um, I just used head cement to cover this body. Um, but these days, we've got solar -es. Um So I'm going to coat this body with just a thin coat of solar -es Bone Dry. Um, this is Bone Dry Plus that I'm going to use here, if I can get it to come out of the bottle. There it goes. So I'm going to put a little on my needle, and I'm going to coat that thread body. I want to get all the way around. And I'm really not trying to build up a big, thick, shiny uh, coating on here. I honestly want this as thin as I can get it. But I want to make sure I get all the way around. And that'll just toughen that up a bit. And then I'll hit it with my light and cook that in place. So we've got our thread body there. Now I'm going to take a little bit of peacock black ice dubbing, and this is going to be our thorax. So the body on this uh, sort of mimics the, the profile, anyway, of an h &L variant, um, just with brighter colors um, and a little tag. So I'm going to twist some of that black peacock ice dubbing down, and I want to twist it down fairly tight. And I'm going to build just a little thorax here. Now I want to make sure that I leave enough room behind the wings and the between the wings and the front edge of the thorax um, to put my hackle. So I don't want to come too too far forward there. Yeah, about like so. So you saw that it was just a couple turns for just a little ball thorax. And then I like brown and grizzly hackle on this one. Um, you could certainly use just brown, but I do like brown and grizzly. It's a nice color combination. It looks just looks very fishy to me. Um, so I'm going to take my brown and grizzly. I'm going to stack them one on top of the other. Doesn't matter which one's first. And I've got them stacked inside to outside. And I'm going to strip the bases so that I've got, oh, it's about a half shank worth of bare stem. And I'm going to tie this in right at the front edge of the, of the thorax. And I'm going to wrap over those stems right up to the base of the wings. Um, now you can't see it from that angle, but those stems come just a little longer than the hook eye. I'm going to trim them off just behind the hook eye. And what that's going to do is even my underbody, my arbor, that I'm going to wrap the hackle over. Now I can come in front of the wings and anchor that stem down all the way. I'll come back to the wing and then forward again. And that's just to try to even that out a little bit. Now I'm going to take both feathers at the same time. And I'm going to start wrapping a couple turns behind the wing and a couple turns in front. And just sweep those wings back. One, two. And I'll tie that, those two feathers off just behind the eye. A few good tight turns. Let's give us a little more light now. There we go. That's a little better. I'm going to come in and trim these two feathers out. I want to hold them as close to the hook as I can and just sneak my scissor tips in between. What that'll do is all those little loose fibers, if I get those right where you can see them, all these little loose fibers that are falling out now would have been sticking out over the hook I had and not trimmed that off that way. So that's a much cleaner way to, to do a tie off there. And then I'm going to come in with my whip finisher and cover those stubs with my whip. Come in and nick that thread out. I caught one hackle fiber there. I'm going to get rid of him. And since I probably got a little bone dry here on my desk. I'm going to put a little drop of that on that thread head. And we'll give that a little shot with the light as well.
All right, what I didn't mention is that Hackle's a little oversized, which is the, the variant part of the HNL variant. Uh, variant back in the day meant that the Hackle was slightly oversized. So you can see that Hackle, um, to me anyway, is a little oversized. I like more like one and a half. This is getting toward two hook gaps on that longest Hackle. So it's oversized Hackle, um, big bushy dry. Um, definitely easy to see those two big white wings and that white tail make this fly really stick out. Um, and I've, I tie this fly in a bunch of colors. The chartreuse, uh, you know, lime green color here, um, a wine color, a blue color, um, and a pink color. And the pink is a great red quill. Um, it's surprising because this doesn't, this is not, you know, when you look at it, it does not seem like it's an imitative fly. Um, but this fly during red quill hatch, especially in the evening or red quill spinner falls, um, that hot pink body, is about the right color and that's very often just what they're looking for um, but one of the cool things is, is those two white wings and white tail make it much easier for you to look for um, if you fished uh, <clears throat> red quills or rusty spinners late in the evening when it's getting dark uh, you know it could be a, a hard fly to see um, and as big and bushy as this is compared to the real spinner um, this fly actually does the job pretty well in the right color so anyway that's my go to hell variant from from back in the day a little blast from the past um, that's a cool fly. It's a fun fly to fish. You know, small creek stuff for sure. Um, I fished this on the on the Colorado and the Platte, in the Arkansas, all kinds of places like that. And it's it's a great little attractor. Um, you know, just generic. But that's kind of a fun one. I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. That kind of brought back some good memories. I'm going to tie some more of those, and I'll probably end up giving them to my boy. Um, there you go. All right. I hope you guys have a good day. Take care. We'll see you again soon.